What is up, everybody? Welcome to Dead Ball TV. Today, we got a special episode that is going to be all about the Paraguayan national team. And I'm not an expert, so I had to bring on one. Paraguayan American Roberto Rojas, thank you so much for coming on the channel. We got a lot of topics to get through. We got the Copa America coming up. We got World Cup qualifiers. And we got the big news that you guys were awarded one of the hosting spots for the 2030 World Cup. And I feel like we have to start with that topic. Because I feel some type of way about it. I don't know if you saw our video on the channel, but um, I'm just going to hold my opinion and I want you to talk about it first. So you guys are going to be playing the first game at home in 2030. You are going to be given an automatic qualifying spot for 2030 before you fly to Morocco or something for the next couple of group games. How do you feel about that? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me, Jack. I really appreciate it. And honestly, you know, this has been kind of a, a crazy last few days for Paraguayan football as a whole, because, you know, like you said, the fact that not just a World Cup is coming to Paraguay, but the fact that Paraguay will be playing in a World Cup. It's been a long time since we can say that, since 2010. And I think that's where a lot of people feel very excited, that they feel like the fact that Paraguay have qualified for one, despite not even participating in a qualifying process, I think that helps in comparison to what Argentina and Uruguay have done in the past. Mm -hmm. It feels like, yeah, like this is, this is great for us, but I, I do feel a bit indifferent because like, and I'm sure people will feel this way as well, because I think there was a lot of hope given on Paraguay and all the other nations as well. That was in that bid um, with uh, even Chile as well. Chile were in that bid to, to be like the entire. Oh, the we don't talk about Chile. For the entire, yeah, no, we, we don't talk about them, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, but just like everyone was hoping that it was going to be just for them. And then you have Spain, Portugal, and Morocco in the mix. And that's where everyone was kind of feeling a bit iffy. I mean, yeah, people will be will feel very happy and proud that they'll be able to host a World Cup, let alone just one game. And yeah, obviously to celebrate the 100 years, it's it's a big thing. But at the same time, I think there is that level of like, you know, feel not, I wouldn't say disappointment, but kind of feel like a missed opportunity that the entire World Cup should have been in that entire continent in South America where it first started 100 years ago, but now being played majorly in Spain and, and Portugal and Morocco. So, like, from my perspective, I think it's it's great. Like, you know, obviously it's good for me because I get two straight World Cups with my two nations of one of my nation of birth and the nation of my family. So I hope I got it's a win win for me. But yeah, it does feel a bit kind of disheartened that it's just one game and i feel even for the same for the people from argentina and uruguay that you know despite them hosting the world cup before the fact that they only get one game is also a bit kind of disheartening for them because they thought that maybe they had an opportunity to to do the entire tournament so i said in our video reacting to the news that the biggest winner from the 2030 world cup was paraguay because you guys got the automatic qualification do you guys feel fortunate? Do you guys feel a little lucky that you got that opportunity? You know, I think from a critical standpoint, it, it does, because I think when you compare all the countries, and I'm, I'm even putting Morocco in that mix, because I think they've always had success at host, hosting tournaments, you know, Spain, um, Spain and and Uruguay and Argentina have hosted World Cups before. Portugal have hosted big tournaments. Morocco have hosted big FIFA tournaments as well. Whereas Paraguay, yeah. the last big, big tournament that they, they've done, like small stuff, like, you know, like multi sport tournaments and like futsal and beach soccer. But the last big, big tournament was a Copa America back in 1999. So times have changed in the last 24 years since then. And you look at kind of where you see Paraguay as a whole. It's like I don't like to, I don't want to be too critical, but like in this case, you know, you look at how Paraguay is and why that that's the case that they don't host a lot of stuff. Well, you look at some of the issues that the country is going through from an infrastructure point of view. Yes, they've improved a lot since that, but it still feels like it's not up to mm. par. And I think that was something that maybe FIFA and Comebol were a bit hesitant about, like. If they had had the chance of putting Paraguay in that mix where, you know, of course, they also have a big hold in itself because that's where the Commonwealth headquarters are. That's where the president Alejandro Dominguez is from as well. So you have that kind of control, too. But if you look at it from a broad standpoint, you think, is Paraguay capable of hosting a big tournament like the World Cup, let alone just one match? And, you know, I would say 
probably like I would say if, if they really got their stuff together in the next seven years, then yeah, for sure. But I think now with kind of all of this going on, it feels like, yeah, I mean, I'd say we feel lucky. I mean, again, like, of course, Paraguayans will happily feel fortunate to participate in a World Cup um, for the first time since 2010. I think people will feel happy about that. But, you know, at the same time, and I'm sure other countries like, you know, Peru, Chile and other surrounding nations who now have to fight for qualification oh, yeah. for that, they're going to feel a bit like a bit unfortunate because those were countries that have been to world cups before who have done better in previous tournaments that kind of thing whereas paraguay have kind of fell off in the last you know like i said 15 years and they don't haven't had that kind of change and now they get to host a world cup i mean that's kind of the feeling there yeah. it's it's great it's good for the country host it's, a world cup yeah yeah i'll get a game yeah. literally one one game but hey it's, yeah. it's on the it's on the official title so you take that but um no nah, man it's it feels I mean, I, I feel happy and I, and I can't wait for it to happen, but I think there's going to be a bit, a lot of questions going to be asked from here on out, like how the hell is this going to work out? I want to get back to that in a second, but you have a show that you do independently of your work at ESPN called Guarani Vision, and uh, you have some co-hosts who are on the ground in South America. They have a very good, you know, pulse check of what's going on over there. I'll put the links in the description. You guys should definitely go check it out. They do really good stuff over there. What was the response from the rest of Conmebol when they found out that Paraguay were getting these hosting rights for 2030. Yeah. Like I said, I think people felt a bit like in a way, like jealous in a way, like Chile, for example, I know we don't want to talk about them as much, but they were part yeah. of that bid and they felt like, what the hell we got, we got sold out. Like they, they're probably pissed least. off. Oh, hell yeah, absolutely. I think they, they, and they have every right to, because I think, you know, this is obviously no disrespect to, to Chile, but the way that they handle tournaments and how they are as a country is way beyond what Paraguay can offer. And this isn't this isn't even saying it's a bad thing, but it's just it's just true. Chile are from are an not. infrastructural standpoint. For sure. It's and even okay. even Uruguay, who have three million less people than Paraguay, their their economy is way better than Paraguay. So it's like it comes through that. And I think that in itself feels like, you know, Maybe there are some things going on in Comet Ball where, you know, they're trying to give in some offers and, and whatnot. Because, you know, as many, many people maybe don't know, there is a lot of corruption happening in Paraguay. I'm not going to say what, but there it does happen at, at every level. It doesn't matter if it's I'm from shocked. a political or sporting. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it comes from there. So, yeah, I, I think countries have every right to feel pissed off. But at the same time, you what do you do from there? You know, it, it, this was something that, you know, Paraguay have been able to have this control the president dominguez you know has kind of really transformed the way that the confederation has been for the quite for the last how many years he's been in charge seven years or something so it's it's his power i guess and, and rightly so so yeah i mean there, there it's just those things that happen and i think countries have every right to to feel pissed off but i mean i guess my message is do it yourself if you feel that you can host a, a world cup and you can do better why don't you do it so do Paraguayans feel like there probably was a bit of nepotism here, given that Dominguez is Paraguayan? Yeah. Yeah, the, I, I think so. I, I think there had been some, you know, obviously not from like major people, but you see on social media, it's the, the always the running joke is, when is Dominguez ever going to favor the Paraguayan teams or, you know, even like the clubs in competitions like Libertadores, Ortiz, Suamericana or whatever? And you think to yourself, all right, I got you. I'm going to gonna host a World Cup now. So, yeah, I mean, again, this is I think this is strictly something that is definitely people will feel happy, like I said, and, and rightly so, as they should, because I think any country that hosts the World Cup and their people are going to be very proud of it. But it, it, again, it's it just it feels weird because it's one game. It's not a whole tournament. Yeah. If you're Moroccan, if you're Spanish or if you're Portuguese, then you're over the moon for sure. Oh, you get for sure. To do that. Especially Portugal and Morocco have never hosted a World Cup, but for Paraguay, who again have never hosted, it, but they get one game, it's like eh, it's something. But hey, it's a World Cup, like that kind of thing. You're like, yeah, we're getting this, we're getting, we're so happy, but just one game. Ah, oh, who cares? At least we're still getting it. So I think people are more happy that they that they're even gonna play in a World Cup more than anything. Like it doesn't matter yeah. what happens afterwards. Like the fact that they get to play in it is what people are most happy about, honestly. I want to take a quick break to remind you guys to hit subscribe if you haven't already done so and to follow us on social media, links in the description, so you know all about our upcoming videos and live streams. Thank you guys for the support. Now back to the video. 
I can imagine. And I do want to get to World Cup qualifying in a second. But before that, I want to talk about the 2024 Copa America because that is the next big competition that is on the horizon. What are the expectations that you and the Paraguayan people have for this team at the 2024 Copa? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a, a weird tournament because obviously I think we understand kind of the limits and the the powers that other teams have, like a Brazil, an Argentina, uh, a Uruguay, Colombia, and even the countries in, in North America, like Mexico, the United States. You know, they have every right to feel as if though they have better teams and they're there to compete. Whereas for us, we look at it in the case, and there's other countries that will feel that way, where yeah, you know, obviously we're there to compete and we shouldn't go into a tournament where we don't feel as if though we can't win it because we've done it in the past, albeit many years ago. Um, but I feel like yep. in this, from a realistic point of view, it's looking at your base of players and all depends on how they do in qualifying, of course, until then. But it's just, you know, looking at your base of players to see what works, because these are the the teams you're going to be facing in these kind of competition in this competition and also in qualifiers you assess it very well and you say, okay, these players I like, I want to use these guys and I want to create my base of players to then compete. So I think in general, I think it's, you know, realistically you want to go and try to compete because, you know, Paraguay have every right to compete against any country that they can, they can play in like any of the other ones. But I think also they want to see what works best and, and ultimately find that base of players that can then help them compete in the big World Cup qualifying matches to obviously make it to the World Cup in 26. Do you think this team is built to compete, though? Do you think you have enough? I think there are some issues. Um, I, I think when you look at it on paper in comparisons to other teams, like like I mentioned beforehand, I think it would be a bridge too far to put them in that kind of route as contenders. I think, yeah, there, there are still some issues, and I'm sure we're going to get into that. Um, when we talk about the, the games, but, you know, I, I look at some of the players who, you know, have been performing at club level, like Gustavo Gomez at Palmeiras or Miguel Miron at Newcastle, who, you know, is on great form. But when they put on the Paraguay shirt, it's a whole different story. So that's kind of the, the fear that I have is that, you know, we have a good base of players who have demonstrated that they can compete and they can play at club level. But when it works out on the national team, sometimes it just it doesn't fit. And, you know, that leaves into a bit of frustration and also that kind of love hate relationship with these players because i think in comparison to other countries like argentina brazil or uruguay who will always produce players they'll always go to world cups i'd say whereas countries like paraguay who have to compete for those last spots you know they always are going to be judged independently of how they do in their club career i think that they, that's that's credit to them and how they're being judged but mm -hmm. it's how they go on the national team how they go to yeah. world cups that's how they're that's how like all these players that have come before them when Paraguay made it to four straight World Cups, they're the ones that are kind of the standard. And so this new generation who have grown up watching those players, who have grown up as, as their idols and to say, hey, I want to be in that position. And then when it comes into that situation, when they fail, then they get judged deeply from everyone, from the public, from the media, from everyone that's involved. And so they're viewed less and less upon them. And yeah, if you win something for sure, you're going to be obviously remembered especially for a country like paraguay only won two of them so if you win something like this in a in a dream world obviously then yeah you're going to be remembered independently what they do at a world cup or whatever but ultimately it's just that it's following those footsteps that those players in the past have done and to understand that responsibility and saying you can create your own history you could be remembered there and you could do what those guys haven't done beforehand and do better. Because that's that's ultimately how it does happens mm. for every team. Like it doesn't matter if it's national team or club. Like obviously, you know, even with Argentina, for example, you know, they had to deal with all those years of expectation because they haven't won anything since 1993 with the Copa America and then the World Cup. And so now all these guys under Scaloni, you know, they'll be remembered because of that. And and the similar cases for Paraguay. People will remember Paraguay going to World Cups and competing. Now this generation has to, you know, have that responsibility and be able to do the same thing. Is it disrespectful if I said that Paraguay making a quarterfinals would be success at the next Copa? I, I think, think that's it, a good tournament for y'all. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so too. I think it, it, again, like, it's knockout football. You know, you never know what could happen. And, you know, I think obviously when you do well, you always want to, to compete and you always want to to obviously go for more because that's, that's that happens to everyone it happens to any yeah, team yeah. <laughs> like when you start winning and you're thinking you can go far like oh my god we can do this we can win this 
but yeah, I mean, again, I, I think making it to a quarterfinals, you know, getting out of the group, especially in a in a tournament that doesn't have a lot of teams, it's not like the Euros, it's not like Afcon, you know, and, and where they have more teams. This is a relatively small tournament; it's sixteen teams, mm-hmm. so it's like the margin of error is way, you know, smaller, and then you know you can't fail from that. And I think obviously it allows us to to say that you know we've played against these teams before; we know what it what they're like. We we play them every so often and you know even those that play from an international perspective like you know Newcastle with Almiron he has Bruno Guimaraes as his teammates or or Julio Enciso before obviously when he was there with Alexis McAllister you know they, those are players that they're used to and so having those ideas these are national team players who you know either play against each other in the same league or in the Champions League or whatever or they have them as teammates so it's that case of understanding and rightly so in this year. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'd say right now, if this Copa America starts tomorrow and, and I had to give you a prediction where they finish, I'd say a quarterfinal would, would be fantastic. But again, it's always the case of like, hey, we've gone this far. Why not we just go and try to just win two more games, as they would say, which, you know, it's, it's hard. It's better said than done. But like, yeah, man, that's that's just yeah. how it is over there. And I'm sure a lot of countries yeah. feel that same way as well. Maybe you guys can make another run like 2011 where you just mm-hmm. advance on pens every time. Who knows, man? That, that, that's the beauty. Uh, yeah. That's the beauty. Yeah. The beauty and the f- ugliness, honestly. We'll yeah. get to that later. I got to ask this, though, because, you know, we got a lot of CONCACAF. Uh, the, the CONCACAF, the Mexican, the U.S. Men's National Team, even the Canadian audience is pretty big on the channel. Do you think Paraguay is better than the U.S. Men's National Team or Mexico? No. No, I don't think so. I I think the United States have definitely evolved in what way in another way that the Paraguay they always like they always like to do that. Especially for myself as a Paraguayan American, they always like to see like how can the Americans be so good and and you know sometimes I have to tell them and like you know these guys have done like incredibly improved in everything. Like we don't even have like you have someone like Matt Turner, you know who's a who's a top level goalkeeper for a Premier League team. Paraguay doesn't yeah. have that. You look at some of the midfielders like Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, Paraguay doesn't have that. You have a Pulisic, okay, maybe you can make the comparison with Almiron and maybe Gio Reyna with and CISO, but that's it. And you and the US have Tim Weah, they have, you know, uh, Balogun, they have all of that. They have way more. The same for Mexico, who, you know, they've oh, again they, they've gone through rough patches in the in the past, but they've always been competitive. Their league Amen. is better. They're national team players. Yeah, they, they'll always showcase themselves, and, and rightly so. But no, I, I think ultimately if they were to face each other in a match, yeah, it'd be tough. It wouldn't be as one-sided. But I think when you look at it, and even for Canada as well, like that maybe might be a bit more – that might be a bit more closer because I think, yeah, with the exception of maybe an Alfonso Davis and Jonathan David, like, you know, you look at all the other players, maybe you could say that, okay, maybe there are some Paraguayan players that are better. So – I think that's the only comparison I'd make where it's a bit more even, which I'm sure the people will take that one way or the other. But I think with like the United States and Mexico and maybe some other CONCACAF countries as well, you know, I'm not going to name who, but maybe like Costa Rica or something. Maybe that's a bit more closer. But mm-hmm. I think from a realistic standpoint, the way that Paraguay is viewed now, how they're like, how they perform and with the players that they have, I think it's it's not bad to say that the United States and Mexico are, are just better because – They've gone to World Cups. They've performed better in their tournaments. They've won tournaments. And yeah, Paraguay haven't been able to do that in the same time span as well. Mm-hmm. I would say right now, we did a America's ranking a while ago. And I think I had Paraguay 10, Panama 11th. I think you guys are a little closer to Panama. I think you're you're better than Costa Rica right now. You just okay. are. Um, <laughs> we'll see what this new generation, you know, uh, new manager and everything. We'll see what they end up looking like. But right now, at this moment in time, I do think Paraguay are are, are slightly better. But um, it always fascinates me. I think, you know, I'm watching like the CONCACAF Nations League or something. I'm like, what if this was like Paraguay versus Canada in the semifinals? <laughs> you know, like what would be going down right now? And I don't know if you ever have similar thoughts like that. Yeah, but- no, I, I'd love it. Like anytime Paraguay plays any of those teams, you always want a barometer. You always want to have like a good barometer. Like there's always also those mm-hmm. debates where like, oh, bring the CONCACAF teams to to the South America, see how they feel, because we'd wipe the floor the same way we we go to CONCACAF. Kind of like, I don't know, like if, if we do a Paraguay Jamaica, we we'll probably we'd beat them. Or, you know, even even the smaller countries like Bolivia, Venezuela, like you put them in 
I don't know, Nicaragua or something. Yeah, they'll probably get some wins there. So, yeah, that's I always feel like that's always the the good barometer to to measure ourselves. But again, we always want to see what we do against the bigger teams. So that's also like putting ourselves with the, with the high standards. What was the Paraguayan reaction when it was announced that the Copa America was going to be the United States again? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think people feel indifferent about that honestly like i'm gonna be really it's not it's not even like a negative emotion yeah i mean i i think obviously because you know the united states obviously has that kind of control like yeah there's you can have every whatever opinion you can have on the country but i think there's always that sort of influence out there um and you know even Mm -hmm. speaking to some of the players you know, who maybe have never had the chance to even travel to the United States, you know, having that experience of playing in those big stadiums. I had the fortune of going to the Copa America, the last one in 2016, and I was able to hang out with some of the players and they were amazed at seeing some of the stadiums because they, they're not used to it, even if they are playing in, in South America, like this, it's a whole different level. And so I'm sure the similar aspects will be made for other teams, um, for sorry, for other players who've never had that experience. And no, I mean, Genuinely, yeah, there people are going to be pissed off. Like, oh, why don't they play it in in South America? Because it's a South American competition. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. But I think they they they're fully smart of how just much pull the United States has in comparison to like other countries there. That money talks, man, and they will do whatever as Ooh, long yeah. as they, as long as they can compete. Hey, if they can compete and they if they can win, that they don't care where that tournament's going to be played. Well, I hate to say it, but uh, y'all ain't winning the next Copa. Um, <laughs> Maybe if it was in Paraguay. You said last time y'all hosted it was 99? 99, but they finished in the quarterfinals. Brazil won that tournament, so Dude. not even close, man. Yeah, we don't, y'all... We, don't have that big, we don't have that big home advantage. We don't have altitude or any of that shit, so Dude. that's not them. I really feel like Paraguay are quarterfinal merchants, bro. Like every Copa, y'all going out in the quarterfinals. It's insane. It's, it's the insane. history of us, really, man. Like, like <laughs> that, that, that one fluke. I, I remember that one fluke. 2011 tournament where we went where we went to the final we lost in three nil we lost three nil to uruguay, uruguay yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah we lost to them but every single game was a draw and doing penalties and you think to yourself it's like kind of similar to what boca is doing in this lyric the artist it like, is it's, it's literally, literally the same the exact same thing and so once that game once the final game happened and yeah obviously people are gonna feel happy I mean, my dad even told me this he's like Nah, these guys are done. Like they they played all those minutes because you have to remember, in comparison to what Boca are doing, they got extra time. We got extra time there, so that's thirty more minutes in both those two games. And it was against mm-hmm. Brazil and Venezuela. So yeah, the the once that game happened against Uruguay, and they lost three 0 That was like he told me, it's like yeah, this I expected this. We were we were mm-hmm. done. So yeah, who knows? Maybe one of these days we'll we'll break that. But yeah, I mean. We just gotta look at it realistically and say we're we're not there to compete. We're just there to to have the best team that we can have. Try to do something. How is a guide like Tata Martino remembered by Paraguayan fans? I think he's someone that obviously changed the way that Paraguay is viewed in the world. I think you know certainly like other countries who like beforehand with Packerman with Colombia, Gareca with Peru, um, and many others. The goats. Uh, exactly. Chile with San Paoli and, and even Bielsa to the extent. You always have those managers that you are remembered. And, and rightly so. When you break records, you know, like Paraguay did under Tata Martino, they finished second in qualifying. Never happened before. They go to the World Cup and they finish top of the group. Never happened before. They beat Japan on penalties and go to the quarterfinals. Never happened before. So when you have all those, and again, it's it's talked about dearly. It's still remembered to this day, and even more so as Paraguay have failed to make it to World Cups. People remember those sides because you know this was the that that World Cup in South Africa was the fourth straight time they had been to one. So and obviously, exactly, and re- and you know record breaking uh, performance aside, you know it's always going to be remembered as years go on, especially when they don't make it to World Cup. So, yeah, I think he's someone that is fully respected and he's kind of changed the, I, I wouldn't say he's like a god or anything or anything like that. Like, we're not, we don't, we don't believe in those type of worship. We're not, we're not, we haven't reached those limits yet. We're not like, okay, okay. not like Maradona and, and Naples or anything like that. No, we don't, we don't okay. believe in that. Because There's just, not a Tata Martino statue in a No, no, not no. yet. There is, there is, 
Hell yeah. I mean, look, they got this new guy, Garnetto. He took us to a World Cup and he, and we haven't even played a qualification. They might as well build a statue now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dominguez needs a statue, I think. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That That's it. Exactly. Get, get that guy instead of that. Yeah. But no, I think it's you always are remembered for, for how good you do and your best performances. And yeah, Tata Martino will always be remembered, of course, unless someone else goes in and does, him, uh, does better. But yeah, I mean, this is someone that is fully respected and will always be welcomed with open arms in Paraguay anytime that he goes. Were you surprised that Tata Martino in Mexico worked out how it did? You know, for better or for worse. Were you surprised given that you had seen him managing the team at, you know, two Copa Americas, right? In one World Cup? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, and even before that, like just his previous time as Boston and Argentina and Barcelona. Argentina. Atlanta, you know, he's he's had some Paraguayans there as well. Um, so mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, I've, I've been able to follow his career and kind of demonstrate that, yeah, he's had some sort of su- some sort of success everywhere he went. Okay, yeah, he lost those finals at Argentina and maybe he didn't have a, a good amount of time at at uh, Barcelona. But hey, at least he was able to do what he did at Atlanta United. And, you know, even now at Inter Miami where, you know, again, they, they haven't made the playoffs, but hey, they've kind of transformed and become better. And hopefully can mm. do much better stuff next year. Yeah, I, I was. And but then again, you, you come on, dude. Like we we know what Mexico is like, man. No manager over there is safe. Like it's kind of like their round of sixteen merchants. <laughs> like it's like they yeah. always go oh. there in the round of sixteen, unless unless they play a game a tournament in in Mexico. So it's like that. And it goes through that kind of mentality, and yeah, that goes in deep about how the Mexican FA is run, how the players are like it. it it's Unfortunately, I think a toxic environment, and when you work in a toxic environment and you're failed, to, you're destined to, to to fail. It doesn't matter what manager you are, even if you're even if you're Pep Guardiola or whatever. I, I don't even think he can might he might have a chance because I think he's a better tactician than Tata Martino. But just when you look in that environment that Mexico imposed, who's safe from it, man? Honestly, no one, no one is safe from it, and yeah, that's a. That's a bigger problem in itself, um, but yeah, I was surprised honestly because I really thought that they were gonna do something in in that, that last World Cup, maybe get out of the group, but it just wasn't meant to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, th- I think when Tata Martino was appointed, I can't speak for all Mexican fans, but I was pretty excited because you looked at the CV and you were like, "Damn, like he really made bad." He, he had some good stats. Like he he wasn't he wasn't bad. Like even looking at his like record wasn't the worst mm-hmm. one yeah again no 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 and he started he, off really exactly. well yeah yeah and but you know then those results came about then they lost yeah. like nations league and gold cups mm-hmm. and then it's like yeah obviously you're gonna be always judged yeah. for that yeah it's like and, the gold cup final like losing exactly. to the united states i mean he yeah. might as well have been uh guillotined after that go. yeah they, that's we how, should just yeah how it just is, taking man. him out in the in the square in Mexico City and Chapultepec and just taking his head off. That's what should happen. You I... don't lose the United States if you're a Mexico manager. You no. just don't. That's that doesn't matter where. That's that. Which is always not finish. good considering the U.S. are better. You know, that's never like a good uh, metric to grade managers. I don't want to like go into Mexico, but I just, you know, like I said, we no, have a very like large even like, for, even like for us as Paraguayans, like you know, we I think like for myself, no, obviously, but maybe like those that are more old school, where they always view the U.S. as a team that even they. Don't don't care how good they've been it's like we need to beat them we have Gotta to beat them but then even then when you realize like it's it's that weird feeling it's like I, I hate when they people like when they do it like i don't obviously i'm not victim to it but like when teams are like yeah this team like, even the, the last game against venezuela obviously i'm not gonna say if they're better than not but they beat them and it's like the case of like them speaking about how badly we are rather than just recognizing that no venezuela on the day beat us because they've had better players they were better tactically and they've they performed better it's like that so mm-hmm. it's happens to all those countries where you think how can we possibly lose to these guys and it was such a close game too like i mean exactly that was really competitive and venezuela mm-hmm. bro we talked about on the channel dude connor and i joke about we're turning into like venezuelan simps like they've <laughs> <laughs> like their form is really encouraging i'm not going to say they qualify for the world cup but I think they won three games last cycle. There's no way they only do that again. I I, I think they'll win like six. I really <laughs> do. I think that's kind of what the trajectory of Venezuela is looking like. I mean, we'll see. I, I think they got Brazil away and another really tough fixture next window. Actually, yep. 45 minutes ago, our Calm Bowl October preview dropped on the channel. You guys, go check that out. Um, I do want to switch things to World Cup qualifying, specifically to the 2026 World Cup. 
Do you think Paraguay is going to qualify? You know, if I if if I would have told you this la even last month and I did my predictions, I said, yes, they will. And now with this new manager, even though, you know, what happened with Guillermo Vasqueloto happened, in comes in Danny Ganero, someone who is familiar with Paraguayan football. He's won titles there. He's managed a lot of these players. He's faced a lot of these guys during his time there. I'm even more convinced Paraguay can make the World Cup. And I'll tell you why. Because of that, because I think, because I, I just think that when you have a, a manager that is well known, and this this is the same thing that happened to Tata Martino. You know, Tata Martino wasn't a name that was just plucked out of thin air. He was someone that managed in Paraguay for years before he went to that national team. He was well re he was well renowned. So I see those parallels with Garnero, someone I think he's won what five league titles in three different clubs in, in the last eight years managing in Paraguay. So that's where you have that. And I think that's always been kind of the success that Paraguay have always had of getting managers who are familiar with the Paraguayan game. It wasn't the case with Baros Queloto or uh, Berizzo when he was the manager beforehand because they had never managed in Paraguay before. But now you get someone who is very much more accustomed to how Paraguayan football is, how the player is like. Yes, it's changed because, you know, obviously Paraguayan players play abroad now and so they're, they're not used to how it is, but people know who he is and people respect him mm. as for what he does. There is, of course, a lot of question marks, as rightly so. It's like, oh, but he's never done stuff from an international perspective. Like he's done everything he's done at local level, but never won anything in like Copa Libertadores, Sua Americana, never gotten that far. Those are the fears. But, you know, it's a different environment. It's a different landscape. You have players that play all around the world that, you know, you, you don't even know what you could do with these players. But I think I see those parallels. I had picked them to finish sixth. I think I think that's still the case. I'm not changing that for the time okay. being because I think, you know, right now if I were to make my predictions and I'm, I'm still going with it, I say Argentina will, will be the top qualifier. They're going to finish first because I think they're a much better seed team. And I think Brazil dropped points somewhere. I don't know where, but they will, which means with Argentina would jump them. So they would go first, Brazil second, Uruguay third, Colombia fourth, Ecuador fifth, and then Paraguay sixth. But of course, they're going to fight in those last spots between where Ecuador is and then seventh, which I would pick. And, you know, I don't, I know we spoke about Venezuela and even Chile. So we're going to disregard them and I'm putting Peru in there. But it's still open for any of these teams. But I Peru think seventh. Paraguay, Peru seventh right now. If I, if I, if I had, to, and I, I'm keeping that prediction for the time being, I'm going to stick You're with fine. it. We'll see what happens in the next few weeks how they play it, perform, but that's how it is for me at the time being. And and rightly so. If I think Paraguay better, I think so too. And I just I just look at some of the players that we have and I think now with this manager, I'm full on it. I'm full on the on the bandwagon. So and what a what a fantastic test to to really show how good you are against the world champions on Thursday that's in Buenos Aires. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. if this guy is really serious, you might as well do it against the best team in the world. Yeah. Talk about a debut, an introduction to the international stage. I just want to tell you this because I think it's hilarious. I remember when we did our predictions, Connor has Argentina winning this game against y'all 4 nothing. <laughs> I don't know what your, your reaction is to that. but I would say completely L, big L there. Oh, that is bro. not going to happen. No, I don't no think y'all... I was looking at y'all's historical performance against Argentina. You rarely win, but you also don't get blown out very often. It's usually like a one nothing, one one draw, you know, like really close game. I'll give you I'll give you a stat on this one. In the last fifty years that Paraguay have played in Argentina in in, in the World Cup qualifiers, one loss. Just one. Fifty? In the last 50, fifty years. Since night so they've drawn <laughs> games. Sent like for qualifiers for 94, 98, 02, 06, 10, 14. Obviously, they lost 18. We beat them there. We beat them in Argentina. And then the last one, we drew both those games. So, yeah, 50 years, only one loss in Argentina. Okay. So, so then, you know, and why the these, hell? these were teams that are way diff better. These are teams that were world champions, Copa America champions. Like they've had yeah. way better. So, no. And, and, Paraguay and your Argentina game, I'm sure you spoke about in your preview, but they are they're close affairs. They are close yes. affairs. And so that's where I feel like we're there. It's in Argentina. You know, even looking at Argentina, how they are, like in the game against Ecuador, I'm thinking 
Maybe. I'm not saying we're going to win. I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm keeping my lips sealed for now because I, I'm going to do that prediction in my podcast, What I Need Vision. But no, absolutely not 4-0. No, <laughs> no chance. Yeah, I was like, damn. I'll, dude, I'll you, tell you, Connor right that right now. If, if he wants yeah. to... He wants to roast me if that if that results happen go for it he'll take it but i'm telling you right now no chance no no, no. i was like wow okay but we you know we like we got to sprinkle hot takes on dead ball tv every there you go absolutely um, I, I like that absolutely i mean hey i got peru tying argentina nil nil when they play in lima mm-hmm. in, the, in match day four so and that's, that's a hot that's take not well. a bad and that's not even honestly that's not even bad because you know peru have a good home record and and rightly so i think mm-hmm. you, they barely lost to brazil in the last game so who knows yeah, literally Okay, so I'm glad that you brought up this this Argentina record because th- this has to be one of the greatest mysteries in international football. Why can Paraguay not beat Peru? What is going on? This Why is... do they own you guys? What's happening? <laughs> I think it, it's um, – well, first of all, Peru – we've never beaten Peru in Peru, so that's, that's a big one for us. Um, secondly – Never, wow. not in world, not in a, not in World Cup qualifiers. Now, um, they've okay. never lost a game in. Uh, they've never beaten Peru in Peru ever. Um, I think they've only done it. I think the same goes with Brazil and I think Ecuador. Those are the only countries that they've never beaten in their home ground. All the other okay. South American countries, we at least beat them once. So, honestly, bro, I I don't know because I think you know it's it's the same thing like back then. Like we'd always beat Peru multiple times in those time, in those years that they've been to world cup qualifiers and we've been to world cup we've always beaten them yeah at home it's different but like we've always beaten them whatever game that there's is it's just different generations now times have changed you know players have gotten better from peru paraguayan players have gotten worse there's always that balance it, it shifts it always does like there were years where colombia for example they haven't been to world cups and now look at them like you, you know they, they they become they can become world beaters if they if they get their stuff together so, honestly, bro, like maybe from a psychological perspective, I don't know. It's just, it's just better. It's just better. Even though I picked them to finish below us in the qualifying process, I just, you know, it's it, it always are tough games between those guys, and maybe just because I think the quality is just similar, so it could just go either way, really. Yeah, I'm, that's the surprising thing to me is when I think of Peru and Paraguay, probably like Gareca led Peru, I'd give them the edge over you guys, but like an edge, you know, I'd, I'd think that Paraguay would sneak a few, but y'all haven't beaten them since 2014. That was like 10 matches ago. Yeah, it's been a while, but- And um, you rarely yeah, draw I, them too. Like you got eight losses, two draws. Yeah, and again, we, we just happen to have that team with Gareca. And so you still have in a good generation of players. So- Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that, that, that's true. That's, that happens, man. <laughs> it really does. Like yeah. even then, like- and then they, they will come. There, there will come a day that we will beat them in Peru. Who knows? That could be maybe when I'm 70 or something. But yeah, by hey, 2050, it'll, maybe y'all will turn the yeah, table. Yeah, who knows? It'll, it'll happen. But that's that's how the sport is, man. Like it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's the beauty and the and the the um, the ugliness of it as well. Yep. Who is Paraguay's greatest rival on the international stage? Well, we're playing them on Thursday. It's Argentina. I think there is a is it? yeah, yes, and it goes a bit deeper as well. There, it isn't like the hate, hate of like with Argentina, Brazil, or Chile, Peru. It, it doesn't go into that. It's more of there is a. It's a similar aspect to USA and Mexico because the biggest community of immigrants in Argentina is Paraguayans. So mm. a lot of Paraguayans tend to leave their country because they want better opportunities and they view going into places like Argentina, which, you know, again, they're not, they're, maybe they're not in the best shape economically, but they're still, you know, there that can give them more opportunities to evolve. And so there's that, there's a lot of influence of Paraguayans who are Argentine born, who have played on the national team, even to this day from 30 years ago, they've always had those. Um, a lot of Argentine para- players have played in Paraguay from a club level and it's obviously so close. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's always been kind of the the main rival for us. We've always, like, yeah, we maybe have similar ones with, with Uruguay, with Bolivia, and all those others. But we always viewed Argentina because it was it's the country that kind of has that kind of, like, love-hate relationship. Like, we don't hate them, but at the same time, we always want to mm. beat them. It's, it's similar to maybe, I don't know, I said USA, Mexico, but maybe, like, England, Scotland, or... Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Or Colombia, Venezuela. That's another one. Like Venezuela 
kind of been the um the little kids to Colombia where we're kind of the little kids to to Argentina. Mm. So yeah, I mean we we always want to beat them and I think that's that's just how it is. That's how it always okay. has been. Yeah, probably a little closer to like Argentina, Uruguay. Because I yeah. feel like the Scots and the English definitely have like strong animosity, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. It's, I'm, just, I'm going more it's based not like on, a, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah. friendly rivalry. Based. Exactly. I'm just trying to think of like one that, like, yeah, we don't like, yeah, we can make fun of them as much as they make fun of us. So, and they do that. They always done that. And also, Paraguayan players have played there in Argentina. They've kind of made their name. So it's, you know, kind of that balance. It's again, I'm trying to even think. If there's anything, I, I I guess Spain, Portugal is another one. I don't know. I'm just trying to think. Yeah. Of How so? Connor obviously co-host Argentine. He's very passionate about the England Argentine rivalry because of the Malvinas. Like he brings it up all the time. When Paraguay and Paraguayan fans are discussing rivalries with other teams, like do you bring up historical events? Like do y'all? Are y'all mad at the Argentines because of the the war of the Triple Alliance that happened in like the 18 18- 70s like is that brought up well you know in comparison to the the, the falklands like that's that you got like 200 years difference <laughs> yeah. Sorry, 100 years, yeah. that's what i'm saying like how deep does this go you know what i mean to this not really because like the last major war that we had was uh with bolivia and that was in the 30s so it's yeah. times have changed tremendously man like yeah, yeah it's like yeah like even for us like usa england like we haven't had like those wars since the the 1700s it's like it's those kind of things it's honestly not really it doesn't really go that deep we don't we're, okay. we're not that, we're not that bitter yeah of course like it gets maybe mentioned here and there as like one of those like jokes on and memes and whatnot but like honestly mm-hmm. like even for me and even from people like i even speak to like my, my like my parents or family members they could care less honestly they just okay, okay. They, they just it doesn't cross their mind honestly we're not we're not we're not those type of countries too and either that or we just we just move on just go from there i i love i'm a big history nerd so i love the historical foundations of these rivalries is it like colonization is it open warfare is it trade dispute is it intellectual property beef <laughs> like what you know what's going down every every single country is kind of have like their own you know their own uh, their own source for what countries they have uh, a friendly or not so friendly rivalry with. Um, I do want to wrap things up by talking about the Paraguayan squad overall. And I, I'm really hoping you can give me a dummy's guide to this team. Like, what are they good at? What are they bad at? Who are the players to watch? What would you say? So I, I think this has been a rel- a question that's been asked to me always. Like, what are Paraguay good at? Well, if people had just seen Paraguay in the last two games, they think they're not good at scoring, but they're good at defending. And I think that's kind of been the the nutshell of what Paraguay have always been. They've always been a side that, historically speaking, have always been defensive. They've always relied on that. Um, obviously, in their golden years, like they've always been a side that has been playing conservatively, always on the counter, um, you know, traditional 4-4-2. You know, it, people can say it's boring, but hey, it's it's done that way. So, effective. yeah, I mean, that's that's how we've gone to World Cup. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. That's kind of been our, our MO. You know, it doesn't matter if we're playing Brazil, Argentina, Bolivia. Like, yeah, obviously, compares we want to blow the opposition because in this kind of changed world where, you know, teams are often better to score, I think we're still stuck on that reliance on being good defenders. And, you know, we're always good at set pieces. There's a saying that... They always say in Paraguay that Paraguayan players always have to do the centro cabeza gol, which means the the center, the head, and the goal. So that's yeah. kind of been the, like their MO that they're always sold upon as part of their identity. Um, I think when you look at the team overall, like, yeah, I think, like I mentioned beforehand, Gustavo Gomez, you know, playing in that as that captain, as the center back pairing with Fabian Balbuena, Junior Alonso, you know, those that that's that's going to stay put. The good news is that you know, with a goalkeeper like Carlos Coronel, the the new the new kid basically, because he's he's a Brazilian born with Paraguayan parents, so he he actually got his nationality for to play these qualifiers. So he's the one that, and he's twenty six, which is basically a um, a huge huge age difference in comparison to the last goalkeeper, Adani Silva, who's thirty nine. So we'll take wow. that. That's that, yeah. That's that. That is yeah. It, yeah. We played. We've had two goal. The same two goalkeepers for the last 
oh god, like fifteen years. Him and Usto Villar, which was the main goalkeeper from oh six. Sound like Mexico, bro. Yep, and then you and and before that, Chilever. So yeah, you you always rely on that. So yeah, now we got this guy, and then you look at the other players. Like obviously Miguel Miron, that's kind of someone that's gonna be on tremendous pressure, especially now that he's on great form at Newcastle United and he scored Mm -hmm. all those goals recently against PSG. But everyone is still thinking. Where the hell is he going to do? How how the hell is he going to perform that well on the Paraguay national team? When is he going to step up? And so, yeah, you got players like him that needs to go in there. I, I, I do like the inclusion of the forwards. Obviously, Julio Enciso is not there, which I think is a huge loss for us because I think if he was included, then maybe the results, even for these games and the games beforehand, would have changed because you got someone that is that is young, that is rapid, who obviously is playing at a good team in the Premier League at Brighton. I think he would have been great, but looking at the side now with the strikers, now with Antonio Sanabria, who's always been playing in Europe, and someone also as well that's been scoring goals there but hasn't been able to replicate his form. He's got, what, two goals in 28 games for Paraguay, which is not a good return for a uh, for a striker. But, uh, yeah, yeah. And at, yeah, and looking at some other players like Ramon Sosa and Adam Barreiro, those are two guys that are playing very well in Argentina. Um, Ramon Sosa was talk, kind of talk to me about yeah talk to me about Sosa because I I didn't know who he was until the last round and I thought he impressed me. Yeah, he he's kind of been a, a player that went under the radar when he made his when he made his debut in in Paraguay. He, he um he was at Olympia first, and you know then he made that big jump to to Argentina. He was playing at Gimnasia. Uh, he did very well there. He was one of the more important players there. And now he went he goes to Talleres. I honestly and and actually. The good thing about him is that he has the same agent as Almiron, who at around this age that Sosa was, um, that's that Almiron was at at Sosa's age, is he he went that made that jump to Europe. And I was actually speaking to to his agent, and he was saying, yeah, this kid might actually go into Europe in the summer transfer window. So, no, I think this is someone that awesome. obviously is is kind of taking in the basically as an inciso hybrid essentially, because he's someone that could play on the wing. Maybe it's his blonde hair. I don't know what it is, but. He's playing on the wing. He's rapid. Without doubt. He's, he's been able to showcase that he wants to do something. And after those first two games, you're thinking, okay, we, we got a player here. We got someone that can do something. So, no, I think he's, he's someone to, to look out for. I think he can be the – and then to play in Argentina, like I said, like, you know, so he's familiar to what it's like playing in this kind of environment. I think he can be someone that could be – I wouldn't say the, the main X factor, but certainly someone that could – really change a game and people can start to really recognize him and, and improve from there. So do you think in the strongest possible Paraguayan 11, do you think they find a way to play Sosa and Ciso and Almiron at the same time? I think it's going to be tough um, because, you know, obviously those are players that play in similar positions, Almiron and, and Sosa. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Stolson and Ciso play in similar positions. I mean, don't can play in either position as well. So you're going to have to drop one of them. Um, so I, I don't think it's possible. I think when it is the strongest team, you're going to put Almiron on one side and then Ciso on the other just because they're better players. They're playing in Europe. They have better form. And I think it would be much easier for them to, to perform well. But again, this could be someone that could be a super sub, you know, when the game's getting really tight. And there's not really a breakthrough. And maybe one of these two guys haven't been performing. You bring in Sosa with 20 minutes to go, full of pace, and he's running rings around defenses. So I, I don't think it would work out well, personally, because I think you just you don't have that balance. But I think that's up to Garnero to see if, if it could work. And, you know, again, if he if he does well, and, and this is the opportunity for him. This is the opportunity now with so injured, the fact that he won't be playing until the rest of the year. Sosa, if he's obviously on form, will probably come come back. Will be um, called up next month, so it's his opportunity to say, "Hey, I want to be a good option, and I want to perform, and I want to do something that maybe Enciso hasn't done, and, and try to showcase what I can do on the national team." So, yeah, it's really up to him. But from a realistic standpoint, I just don't see how it could really work out at this time. Okay, Roberto, this is the last question I have for you, and it's very important. Where can I find a Paraguayan jersey, bro? I literally, <laughs> I cannot find these things in the United States. What do I need to get a plug in Asuncion? Like, what what do I have to do? Oh, you got me now. So that, that's, that's your. Oh, plug, oh right? there we go. Oh, there you go. Be yeah. my plug in Asuncion. Yeah, right? man. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, dude, I love yeah, y'all's home kit. I love it. This edition. <laughs> I wish I have it here. I'll show it after uh, off the air. But what, was no, it well it, received when when these new jerseys came out? 
Yeah, you know what? I I looked at it and I thought to myself, it doesn't really stick to me. But then I I had it in person. I saw it on the pitch. I, I wore it a few times. Like, and some people even tell me, no man, it looks good. I'm like, no, it's like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You're right. It does look good. Um, yeah, so yeah, Sweet. man. Like, it is. It's very tough to get though because you know, unfortunately, the, the the thing about Paraguay not making to these World Cups it means that they're not as marketable as one would imagine from other teams who have Puma like like Uruguay, and I'm trying to think even someone who has Puma as a kit provider, but like those kind of things. So it makes it harder to get it. The Honestly, bro, the easiest option that you can get is having a plug. <clears throat> yeah, one plug and uh, <laughs> allowing him to basically get it at one of those stores in Paraguay because there's a ton of Puma stores. Get it there. Have someone. Paraguayans are always traveling through the States and back, so best thing you can do is have someone and this is how i always get my shirts if i'm not there because i always go to paraguay every year um i just go ask the guy ask my my uncle or anyone that's there say hey i want to get this new shirt i'll pay the money he goes buys it and then when there's like a family friend that's leaving paraguay going back to the states tell them bring this and yeah you pick it up when they come back so that's the easiest option man like right Mm -hmm. now yeah you could you could probably find them like like one of those like resell shirt websites yeah. at the minute, but if you want like the real authentic stuff, might as well get it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right, bro. I'll pick you up. So if, you, if you, you're to... trying to think of something, maybe, maybe we could work something off the air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I'll have to. I had to give you the cash app when we uh when we start recording. Yeah, Venmo, 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 yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I, got yeah, I, got you. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got the. Pl- I already got the plug in the in the keto. Now I got the plug in Asuncion. This is great because um, I'm trying to expand that South American jerseys. Uh, collection that i got right now uh roberto that was all i had man i think this conversation has been awesome very insightful paraguay doesn't get the attention that it deserves and i think a lot of people are going to walk away from this episode with some good info could you just tell everybody you know where they can find you and, and what you got going on yeah man thank you so much for having me it's a real pleasure obviously to talk about paraguay wherever i go um but yeah obviously follow me at roberto rojas 97 on twitter that's where i talk about everything uh, in football obviously with this week with the world cup qualifiers that's where i'm going to be mainly focused on not just paraguay but across all of the the countries as well you could also check out my podcast low limit football which is basically a podcast i would do with joe usella i've been doing it for 10 years hard to believe um where i talk about wow. everything that's going on in the world of football um try to do a show every week speaking about it doesn't matter what part of the world we do we always there to talk about it. and of course like you had mentioned at the beginning what any vision the first ever podcast dedicated to paraguayan football in english we do an episode every week talking about what's going on in paraguay doesn't matter if it's the domestic game player wines abroad national team we are there to speak about it and obviously look keep a lookout this week as we preview the games between argentina and bolivia so yeah thank you again for having me and it's looking forward to seeing all the great work that you guys do as well yeah, man, we're got to get you on for a, a live stream with a Paraguay <laughs> game or something like that. I think that'd be a great time. Guys, I will put all of the links to all of his shows, everything he's associated with down below in the description of this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and hit subscribe so you don't miss future comable content on the channel. And lastly, if you happen to be listening on a streaming platform, please get the podcast a five-star rating. If you could, that would really help more people discover the channel. We appreciate you guys for watching or listening. Roberto, thank you again. We'll see y'all in the next episode.